friends, family, peers, the internet. Welcome to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Elric, your host, and today we've got something really interesting. Now, you guys know I started doing all this stuff by myself, and I slowly built up a really awesome team. Raw, and they're bad boys. Now, you guys all gave Kevin an awesome welcome to my channel. He feels really comfortable. You guys like his work. Well, now we're going to step it up a notch even more. Now, you guys know I'm a consumer. Like, I'm not the most intricate phone guy in the world, but I know that a lot of people out there want those very, very intricate phone videos. So now I want you to welcome the latest member of my team. Now, this is Marco. He also works at a company called Phone Dog. Woof! And I want you guys to welcome Marco here to Tech of Tomorrow. So, without any further ado, without seeing my funny face anymore, let's check out Marco and his first video on phone technology here on Tech of Tomorrow. Welcome, Marco. My name is Marco Henner from Tech of Tomorrow. It's the Samsung Galaxy S5 versus HTC One M8. The Samsung Galaxy S5 retains all of that Samsung build quality, or lack of. The only main difference is the new backing that sort of reminds me of the Moto X, but it doesn't feel quite the same. The phone has grown a little in size, with the display now measuring it at 5.1 inches, up 0.1 inches from the Samsung Galaxy S4. Yet the resolution stays the same at 1920 by 1080, but that keeps its pixels per inch well north of 400 ppi. You'll also notice the bezel is a little longer on the S5 and the S4, plus we have a new flap covering the micro USB charging port. This is all to make the S5 more durable in case you drop it, plus it gives the S5 an IP67 rating. With that, the S5 can withstand up to 1 meter of water for 30 minutes with no problem. Just be sure to close all the seals. And apart from those changes, the S5 just looks like any other Samsung Galaxy model. The HTC One M8 takes the design and the build quality of the original one and makes it even better. It's now made mostly from a blend of aluminum and polycarbonate. It also grew to 5 inches up from 4.7 inches. Overall, the phone feels much of the same than the original HTC One, but since it has more metal on it, it feels much more slippery in the hand. The old HTC One was built out of 70% aluminum and had polycarbonate on the sides, which made the HTC One something you can grip on. The new HTC One is now made of 90% aluminum and uses metal on the sides. The result is a very slippery device since HTC has effectively gotten rid of the edge that the old HTC One had. Also, I do like the ergonomics of the S5 a lot better than the HTC One. Not build quality, that's very important. It's just the ergonomics and how it sits in your hand. For example, the M8 has a lock switch on the top right hand side. It's a little bit better than the old HTC One, but now it's way too big for my finger to reach up. The S5 has its power lock switch on the right hand side which is the exact place where my finger will rest. But if you're that kind of person who lets build quality dictate what you buy, the HTC One is top trump. Next is storage and pricing of these two. The S5 and HTC One are flagships and they cost flagship money. The S5 comes in at $199 for the 16GB model and $299 for the 32GB model, while the HTC One only comes in at 32GB for the same $199 price tag. On the S5 you can bump up that storage by $120. 28 gigabytes thanks to a micro SD card slot next to the SIM slot. And now, for the first time, the HTC One M8 adds a micro SD card slot on the opposite side of the SIM tray. It too will support a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, but the only trouble is you need a paper clip to swap it out. The displays on both of these are 1080p. The one on the S5 is 5.1 inches and uses Samsung Super AMOLED technology, which just pops. It may oversaturate the hell out of everything, but it looks darn good. In some places, the screen makes the video look terrible, especially when you watch cinema or short films that intentionally have a flat image to them. The S5 just adds unnecessary saturation that the video doesn't need. The HTC One has a 5-inch LCD panel which brings more true-to-life colors. It's the more natural of the two. Color reproduction is spot on on the HTC One. It's probably the best one I've seen, coming very close or even beating the iPhone 5S, which has had a good track record for being one of the best displays in mobile. If you're going to pick the best display, I would take the HTC One, but I wish it can add the same pop factor, yet retain all the great color reproduction from the HTC One. On the inside, you'll find much of the same story, starting with the HTC One. It has a 2.3 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor, 2 GB of RAM, and the Adreno 330 graphics chip. The S5 uses a slightly faster 2.5 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801A chip, the same 2 GB 
massive RAM and this same Adreno 330 chip. Running Geekbench 3 will show you that the S5 will have slightly higher scores in both single and multi-core tests thanks to the faster clock speed, but we'll have to see how this correlates with real life usage. So let's do some simple application open times on both of these devices. First, we'll kill off all the other applications and open Google Chrome. So we're going to see pretty similar open times. Perhaps the S5 will consistently give you a faster response time thanks to the faster clock speed, but it's not that big of a deal. Opening Twitter will open a little faster on the S5, but YouTube will surprisingly open faster on the HTC One. The other part to this test is just the overall speed and performance through the phone's core menus. The home screens and menus should be the easiest thing a phone should run, and the HTC One with Sense 6 of all of my content runs really well. Not a single lag through the menus, settings, and even in blink feed, it's all buttery smooth. The S5 has pretty much the same experience with this new lightweight version of TouchWiz. The only trouble that I found is in my magazine. It was trouble on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and it's still trouble for the S5. I think Flipboard and Samsung should really rethink how this feature works. Next up is the main star features of both of these devices, starting off with the S5. The first one is the fingerprint scanner that lives under the home button. Very similar to the iPhone 5S, but there's a fundamental difference. Since Samsung's home buttons are very narrow, you actually have to swipe your finger on the home button. The setup process is pretty weird too. Comparing to the iPhone's process of just repeatedly tapping the home button, the S5 wants you to swipe your finger over the home button eight times to register your fingerprint. Then after all of that swiping, the slightest off angle swipe will render it bad and it doesn't pick up your fingerprint at all. When you do swipe your finger perfectly down the home button, it gives you a green light. I like the idea, but it really needs to be foolproof and this clearly isn't. Next is the heart rate monitor on the back. Yes, it's a heart rate monitor and it works with Samsung's S Health application. So basically you just place your finger on the back, this little red light will shine and in just a few seconds it will tell you what your heart rate is. But then with a simple search on the Google Play Store, you'll find that there's plenty of applications that will give you your heart rate. They just use the flash instead. This is a real gimmick of a feature in my opinion. The only product that would make sense are smartwatches, but actually Samsung has three new gear watches with a heart rate monitor, so if you'd like to see that in a future video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Now on to the HTC One M8. It doesn't have a fingerprint reader or a heart rate monitor, but it does have amazing kick-ass build quality. I already talked about how good yet slippery this phone feels. It's so good I'm actually going to say it again. This is one badass phone in all departments to the human senses. It looks good and it feels even better. The next feature is to help people who have smaller hands. It's called Motion Launcher which uses not only your hands but also the gyroscope inside the M8 to unlock your phone, go to the camera, launch Google Now, or go into Blink Feed. The one I use the most is simply sliding from the right hand side to unlock the device and go to your home screen. You can also double tap the display to turn it on. Next, and the best feature of them all, is the boom sound speaker. The original HTC One was the best sounding phone ever. The new HTC One has Boom Sound 2.0. They are 20% more loud and have a wider range of audio frequencies. So now this is the best speaker on any phone ever. Why has it taken it so long for people to put speakers on the front? Every single phone should have this. What now happens is a stereo effect, or basically when something moves across the screen, the audio will follow it. For example, so when you're watching a car race, the car audio will actually move from the left or right and vice versa. It's made my YouTube viewing experience absolutely epic. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. Hope you guys are doing well. Now on to the software. Both of these run the latest versions of Android, 4.4.2 KitKat at the time of recording. Then they go their separate ways. Samsung adds their new lighter fare, TouchWiz, and HTC with Sense 6.0. Samsung has toned back the look and feel of TouchWiz this year, but don't mistake it with vanilla Android. You can clearly see the DNA of this guy. It is more responsive from older versions of TouchWiz, and I do dig the redesign of the menus. You still have those gimmicky features like motion wave and eye tracking from the S4, but that's all old news. What is new for VS5 is My Magazine, which is a feature lifted off the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and all the new Samsung Tab Pro series. It's basically a built-in flipboard application to VS5. You can access your streams of info, social media, and all the other stuff in one central hub. It does lag quite a bit, especially when you refresh your content. Plus, it's not as organized as Blink Feed, which is HTC's variant of the same idea. The M8 has Sense 6.0, which is more of a complement to Android rather than a skin. 
but again, don't mistake this for vanilla Android. I actually prefer Sense over stock Android now. Sense 6.0 is relatively fast, it's very smooth, and it has these amazing additions to make Android look and feel better. For example, the notification bar will actually change colors depending on what application you're in, like this grayish transparent color for the home screens and this green color for Blink Feed. Blink Feed 2.0 is even better from the original Blink Feed. It's not any quicker since it was already fast, but you can now add all the content you want. They've also streamlined the menus to make it a two second job for you to switch sources of content. Next is the cameras. The S5 has a new 16 megapixel camera sensor, making them ever so closer to becoming the next Sony and Nokia with 20 megapixel plus sensors. VM8 has one fourth of a number of megapixels. That means it still has the same four ultra pixel megapixel camera, but the the kicker here is the one has not one, but two cameras. Well, sort of. The main camera is still the same four ultra pixel camera with a new sensor behind it, and the camera on top actually acts as a depth sensor for focus. The result is a camera that can adjust focus after taking the photograph, and this feature is called the Duo Camera. It works very similar to a Lytro camera, and if you put it in the right conditions, someone can really produce some nice bokeh. The problem of detail still persists though. The images are not enough of resolution to really capture any detail, so if you pixel peep or even think about printing these photos off, you may want to reconsider buying the HTC One M8. The S5, on the other hand, takes super high resolution photos with tons of detail. It looks just as good as the iPhone 5S in some cases. Video is also very impressive with UHD at 30 frames per second. The 4K video isn't going to compete with proper 4K cameras, but the detail is much greater than 1080p, so that's a win. And this will help push us into the 4K age with 4K on our phones, so you'll be seeing a lot more 4K on YouTube pretty soon. I generally like to end my videos with battery life, since it sort of fits the end of everything. Yet, it's one of the most important features of any cell phone today. The HTC One M8 comes with a non-removable 2600 milliamp hour battery, 200 milliamps up from the old HTC One. And on an everyday usage test, I've always come home with around 20 to 30 percent of juice left after 9, 10, or 11 hours of complete usage. But it gets better. The HTC One has two power saver modes. A normal power saver mode, which limits things like data transfers while your phone is off, screen brightness, and application updates will get you almost two days off a single charge. The ultra or extreme power saving mode will completely shut off almost everything on the HTC One other than the radios for data and calling. It even shuts off the color pixels on the display so it gives you amazing battery life, but this has not been approved by any of the US carriers so I can't tell you how well this feature works. The S5 has a 2800 milliamp hour removable battery, which again will deliver all day performance. I usually get 20 to 30 percent of battery left after the end of my day. But this too has an ultra power saving mode, which is active on all the US models. This will effectively turn off everything. You can choose what applications you want to run, but that's about it. But color pixels are also turned off, and you get this retro style smartphone. This will almost give you two weeks of full standby off of full charge, which is unbelievable, and this will be a great help on trips that you forget your charger. So to close out this video, it's always going to be a hard decision. These are two great flagship devices that run Android. One is already the superstar giant in the Android space, while the other is fighting to the bone to be recognized in this large pool of those superstars. The HTC One has become one of my most favorite devices of all time. It combines power, beauty, and build quality. But the S5 has also shown me how much I like kick-ass power and also a lightweight device. Plus, it doesn't hurt having an awesome camera. If you can't make your mind up between these two, consider what you value most. Do you value build quality or a lightweight phone? Do you take a lot of photos? How much content do you watch on your phone on a daily basis? These are all good questions to help you figure out which one you want to decide. If it were up to me, I would go for the HTC One M8, but you could have different needs. So make sure to leave a comment below on what you would pick between these two, and remember, different people have different needs, so play nice in those comments section. Well, I hope you enjoyed my first ever Tech of Tomorrow video. If you have any questions for me, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Marco M. Hanna, and also make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for future videos. As always, my name is Marco Hanna from Tech of Tomorrow, and I'll see you guys later.